watching this circle, we know that a bad night's sleep can make us feel tired and grumpy the next day. But what you may not know is that sleep deprivation can have serious implications of your health. Hello, all mothers out there. We know that. <laughs> to make sure we're getting enough Z's to keep the doctor away, please welcome Dr Angus Pike. Yeah. OK, I'm intrigued by this research, Angus. So how much sleep should we be getting? What's the optimal level? Um, when we've looked at millions of people, the data would suggest seven to eight hours. And, and having myself dealt with a lot of people, I think we kind of head for that eight-hour mark. Mm -hmm. So anything less than that, we cause problems. But also anything more than that, we cause problems as well. I was devastated to read if I'm getting about 12 hours sleep every now and then, you're saying that's bad for my health. Why is that? Well, the data would suggest that people who get more than 10 hours of sleep a night increase their risk of mortality too. So heart disease and cancers and things like that as well. So. Um, perhaps it's a bit like food, you know, the right amount. Too much causes problems, not enough causes problems uh. as well. So there is a sweet spot, so... Angus, I think what Georgie's experienced, and, and me as well, is not that we regularly sleep in, in a binge kind of a way, mm. but we catch up on weekends because we get up really early or the baby's waking us up. Mm. Is it all right to have a big catch-up sleep? Look, look, I think occasionally, yes. And we all have those times when we have that kind of super sleep and feel great for it. Yeah. But if that's something that we're consistently doing and finding that we're needing that day in and day out, then perhaps I'd suggest to go back and look at our eating habits and our exercise habits. And if we're needing that amount of sleep, then there might be some issues elsewhere that we need to kind of look at as well. It's so great when that big mama sleep like really hits the spot and you wake up and you're like, yeah. yeah. But what about when you have, you know, 12 hours or 10 or something and you feel terrible the whole day? That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, so it's not you know, there's quality of sleep as, as well, and we'll talk about some tips later on, but, you know, George and I were talking about beforehand, you know, making sure that you've got a nice dark room. And then the other thing too is really about consistency of sleep hours too, because Sam, you know, we've all been jet lagged at different times too, mm. and I, m my contention is that most of the clients I'm dealing with on a weekly basis are in a mild sort of case of jet lag, because, you know, it's 10 o'clock sleeps on school nights, and then the weekend comes and we're completely shifted out, and mm. these different wake and sleep times really throw our brain chemistry right mm. out of whack, and so we're in that mild case of jet lag, so we never get into the rhythms of our sleep, so consistency of sleep times is important, and. Mm. Maybe throw a nap in during and the day it, too. Is it true that the hours before midnight, you know, count as double? You know that old wives tale oh, look, that if you if you go to bed earlier, it's better than the two hours extra that you do Colin, the next there day. There probably is some truth in that. From this extent, is that our brain chemistry, the chemicals that help us with our sleep, are really run from light and dark, and so now we're all, you know, the light artificially impacts things there too, and so that throws us a kind of a little bit out of whack there too. So if we can stay on those kind of cycles, then it probably helps. But as far as it being kind of a two for one. I'm not quite so sure about right. that, but you know, it's certainly something anecdotally that we all notice yeah. that it, it tends to kind of help now, as I well. I want to know um, about the link between depression and lack of sleep. Can mm. you tell us more about that? Um, it kind of goes both ways mm. because you know that you know those that have suffered with depression tend to have poor quality sleep, and you've only got to have one night of cranky sleep, and we kind of wake up the next day and we are grumpier and more moody, and you know, so in essence, sleep, as we started to talk about before, has a really big impact on brain chemistry, mm. and when that starts to get out of whack, we have a hard time coping with the everyday kind of tasks as well so um, we know the impact that a poor night's sleep has but you mean we're yet to understand really how that kind of happens but we know that people who sleep poorly that there's a greater risk of things like depression so what about because in the past sleep deprivation has been used as a form of torture oh absolutely and I know all young parents and mums <laughs> yes. I think postnatal depression is is you know, possibly linked to, to sleep deprivation without a doubt and what is it about this stress um, hormone cortisol so yeah. if we're sleep deprived our body releases this stress hormone cortisol what does that cortisol make us do during the day. Okay, so think of it really quickly. Cortisol comes from our cavemen or women days, mm -hmm. and so it was really super useful when we had to uh, fight a lion or a tiger. So it does things in the short term, like it'll speed up our heart rate and increase our blood pressure and um, switches off our digestive system and our immune system, and all these things will help us kind of fight or flee the tiger. So if the stress is short term like it used to be, it's fabulous, but if the stress is day in and day out, then imagine if your heart rate was high all the time, if your blood pressure was high all the time, if your immune system was switched down, if your digestion system was switched off, that's going to be really lousy for your long-term health. Yeah. And so cortisol, while great in the short term, really has massive impacts on overall health. And so what we know is that when we're not getting enough sleep, that cortisol levels go up. Hence, sleep not being good for just about everything. And we crave really crappy food. Is oh, it almost yeah. like having like a, it's, it's very quite corrosive and acidic in our system? Absolutely. Well, you know, when you don't get a great night's sleep, 
we muck up the hormones that make us feel full. So you keep on eating and eating and eating and we're less likely to feel satiated. And so, you know, people who don't sleep enough, you know, there's weight issues there. They're more likely to have a higher body mass index. Mm. And so what about some tips? For us, Angus. Tips would be this: a, a dark room, Colin. Yep. So when I get my clients to do it, get a nice dark room, it has a huge impact, and they find that they get that eight-hour sleep, and it makes a big difference. So not yeah. even an alarm clock. No, get it as dark as you can. Cover your alarm clock over. You know, un unplug from that kind of stimulus. Second would be really work for consistency of sleep and wake times. Okay. So if you're later to bed, Sam, you have one of those late nights, then... You <laughs> pick me. Yeah, I don't know. Did you know? Probably you you guys did too. you know? Yeah, I was thinking that's the footy thing. So <laughs> um, then, then have a 20-minute nap during the day. That can be just kind of wonderful as well. And, I, you know, unplug. Don't be watching telly just before bed. Yeah. Don't be kind of stimulating, turning yourself on um, as well too. And, and then the fourth one, as I said before, go for a nap. A, a nap yeah. is great. Keep it to 20 minutes the next day. You'll feel mm -hmm. fabulous, refreshed. Um, those things will make all the difference. Thank you so much. Would you please thank Angus Pike. <laughs> Unplug and don't turn yourself on before going to sleep. <laughs> Interesting uh, little suggestion there. Another update from the 10 Newsroom is coming up after this from Nikki. Well,